Welcome to the Freedom Focus series on the Fearless Tips and Talks podcast. We've got something special for you because we are going to interview approximately 10 guests who have found freedom in a particular area of their life. I'm so honored to take you through this chain-breaking series where we dive into specific topics that bombard our daily living. We want to equip and inspire you to walk in freedom from fear and anxiety in a world that feeds it. Well, hello there, Fearless family. My name is Christy Bolwer, and I'm the host of Fearless Tips and Talks. And I have a good friend in the studio today. Her name is Tara Wellnick. And as of today, August 7th, 2023, she is wrapping up her seven-week journey of walking alongside me and several other ladies in what we call Fearless Breakthrough Equip. So I just want to congratulate you that we're coming to the end of that seven weeks. So Fearless Breakthrough Equip is a program that Fearless Unite offers. And the goal was that Tara would have a breakthrough in her own fear and anxiety that she's dealing in her life. But then the cool part about that is not only would she have her own breakthrough, but she would sign up and say, you know what, I'm going to step out and I'm going to help someone else have a breakthrough. So they, they kind of said, okay, I'm going to work through this for myself. And then I'm going to um, commit to leading someone else to have their own breakthrough. So it's kind of a really cool turn of events that we're walking through right now. So Tara is going to, in the next six months, step up and lead a fearless impact study. And it's so great because our verse that kind of grounds all of this is comfort others with the same comfort that God has given you. So we're going to talk about Tara's journey today and how she got connected to fearless and but but first I want you to know that we're starting this series that's called Freedom Focus. And in this, we're going to individually tackle certain topics that create fear and anxiety in our own lives. And today the topic is fear of leading, fear of leading. So we're going to jump into that with Tara, but I want you to know a little bit about Tara. So she is a Christian, she is a wife, and she's a mother of three, and she's currently on her own journey of growing closer to God and ditching anxiety while she's doing it. Mm-hmm. She grew up with a, cath- a Catholic background, a really loving and supportive family, and a bunch of jobs that she's mm-hmm. done in her life. I've, I've been blown away <laughs> by all the jobs that she's done in her life, but she's finally now to this point in her life where she's learning about what's most important. And I can really resonate with that because it took me a long time before I got my priorities straight and figured out what was really important to me. Her new faith journey involves helping other moms, assisting others in discovering their peace and calmness. And she's found that through God's love and care. And all of this, she's doing all of this while she's also part-time homeschooling her kiddos too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Tara, welcome to Fearless Tips and Talks. I'm so grateful that you said yes to this. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm so excited to be here. Great. Okay. So let's get into this. How did you start following Jesus? Tell us a little bit about that story. So I grew up following Jesus, right? I went to church every Sunday. Like you said, I have a Catholic background. My family was very religious. It was, um, it was a Sunday ritual. Um, I would go, I would sit there and they would speak and I would have no idea what they were saying. So I would be dreaming in some other land. Um, so then I went all the way through confirmation. I followed that. And then I believe it was the next weekend I stopped going to church. Um, I started just living life. I didn't really see a purpose. Um, And then signed up through MOPS and kind of with MOPS, you know, you kind of get introduced to that Christian side of things. Mm -hmm. I saw you at a MOPS meeting once you spoke and it was um, honestly, that was life changing for me. Um, You played one of my absolute favorite songs. Um, And it was just great to see how God had moved you. Um, And just seeing that motivation. I had a lot of mom friends in that area as well that just I could just see what God was doing for them and to them um, and just how they shine Jesus's light to everybody else. So basically, I signed up for a couple different mops groups. Um, It was a a very chaotic time. And during one of them, I saw there was a Bible study and I said, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this. Let's just see what happens. And all the way up to that Bible study. Satan was trying to step in and say, don't go. Mm. I mean, all the way up to that morning. And it was my sister who said, nope, you're going to go. I'm walking you in. You're going. And so my sister, as a grown adult, my sister had to walk me in. Um, I sat in that Bible study and they talked about transformation. You know how that happens often through Bible study. 
it happened to me. I sat there and I just, for the first time, I really heard God loves you and you don't have to do anything to earn that love. That was very cool to me. Um, I was definitely changed in that moment, but it wasn't until a few weeks later, still involved in the Bible study, still doing my homework. I was in my kitchen. My kids were driving me crazy. I have three littles. And so just, it was a lot going on. One kiddo was sick. One got hurt. I needed to take one to the doctor, but they didn't have any openings. It was just chaos. So I stopped and I hit the ground. I started crying and I put my hands up and I said, God, help me. This, I can't do this. I can't do this alone. I need you. And in that moment, everything changed. The doctor called. My husband all of a sudden could get off work and come home and help me. And it was just such a beautiful moment of God showing me, hey, it's funny when you give over control, how quickly things can change for you. And in that moment, everything changed. I go to church every Sunday now because I just love to be able to worship him. And I just love to shine his light through me in every way possible. Wow. Tara, I what I love about your story is often we hear the big testimonies where I was broken down or, you know, I was addicted to drugs or, you know, I was in financial ruin and I was in bankruptcy and God showed up in the, and those testimonies are so powerful and so incredible. However, God met you in this little quaint space of, I just am a mom that is completely like going crazy right now with three littles. And I just, I just need your help. And I I think I'm just going to like reach out and ask. And he showed up and that transformed your life. It did. It did. And that is one thing that the, the breakthrough group has really helped me with. I never knew that was my, my story. I never knew that was my testimony because you're right. Everyone has this big story. I was addicted to drugs. I had a baby young. I did this. I did that. God changed me. And it's amazing. And I love that for them. But then it shows people like us like, oh, something big has to happen. Mm. And I think I actually said that in a Bible study a while back, like nothing bad, crazy has happened to me. So nothing, you know, there's no big transformation. So this, this equip group has helped me to realize So many people have that story that I have that is just so like low key and so no big deal, but it's such a big deal. And so I just am so thankful that the group has allowed me to discover my true testimony and my small moment and how big of a deal that was in my life. So you, uh, a mop mops group, by the way, if anybody doesn't know, it is mothers of preschoolers and it's a Christian type of group where moms get to come and just have a break and do some crafts, study mm-hmm. God's word, hear an encouraging message. And what's beautiful about mops is it does spur people on to go dig deeper into God's word. And it sounds mm-hmm. like that's what it did for you, which I think is so incredible. So now you're in this Bible study, you're breaking things down, you're learning, you're growing with God, the God's word is illuminated in your heart. You're, you're, you're learning. It's just so, so cool. So I want to ask you now that you have taken a Bible study and you've committed to go off and teach someone else a Bible study through our equip program. Why do you think that people are so intimidated or scared to turn around and lead? And maybe why are they more comfortable with just sitting and learning? Honestly, they're sometimes they're afraid to be labeled, be labeled a Christian. There's so many times in this world that it's so easy to offend others, right? Um, God doesn't speak what we want to hear. God speaks the truth. And sometimes that's not what we want to hear. Sometimes that's not what other people want to hear. And it offends people. So I really think a big part of it is they don't want to be labeled. Wow. And that's devastating. Um, but it there's some truth behind it, but that's why it's so important to do it anyway. Just move forward and push through. You're doing this for God's glory. You want to be able to change someone's life to be able to have them look to God. Yeah. So I feel like that's a big part, but also just, I mean, my personal answer is I don't know that much. You know, I open the Bible and I know quite a few stories. The more Bible study that I do, the more I know what's going on, but I can't just pop out a Bible verse. That's not a thing that I can do. It's not a talent I have. Um, If someone says a story, they're like, oh, you know the story about? I'm like, probably not. Let's start from the beginning. (laughs) So it might just be a fear of lack of knowledge. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I I love that you brought up just that you don't want to be labeled because once you step out and say, hey, I'm going to lead this Bible study or I'm going to lead this impact group through Fearless or whatever it might be, then like you put yourself out on Facebook, you put yourself out on social media, maybe you send some emails, maybe you send some text, and then it's like, oh no, now people know, yep. like you're taking a stand. You're, mm-hmm. you're saying I'm ready and willing to go and make disciples and to teach other people. And so I think you're right. I never really thought about that, that the you're afraid to be labeled. Mm -hmm. I think another thing, uh, just that lack of knowledge, I think, you know, I I always tell people someone always knows less than you and someone always knows more than you. So we can't let that stop us ever. So right now, Tara, you have more wisdom with life experience and where you are with in, in the word than someone else does. So why wouldn't you reach out and grab that person's hand and say, Hey, I've been there. I've, I know what this is like to not want to be in a Bible study or not sure. Like, let me walk alongside of you. I mean, how beautiful is that, that you can do that? It really is. And to just know that you're doing it all through God. He's strengthening you piece by piece, story by story, verse by verse. Every time you learn something new and you can pass that information on, God's doing that for you. And God's doing that for those people around you as well. Yeah. It's just so strong and so, so powerful. I think that that lack of knowledge, I don't have what it takes. I don't know enough. That's a lie that I believe as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are so many people that have doctorates in theology and are mm-hmm. so white. And it's like, I get so intimidated. Like, who am I to like go out and write a Bible study or to do, you know, do that stuff. So Tara, what are some lies that you've believed that have kind of like just whoop stopped you from stepping into saying yes to leadership or Bible study leading? Well, like I said, number one is lack of knowledge. But like you said, I know more than somebody else and I know less than other people as well. So if anything, I can learn from those people that know more than me if they were to sign up. Um, but also, what if no one signs up? What if people are like, I know what she's about. I know the type of person she is or the type of person she used to be. What if they say, I don't want to listen to what she has to say. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear her interpretation of God's word. And so that's just such a a blow to think that nobody would want to sign up, even though I know that's wrong and I know it's Satan. and I know he's speaking to me and I'm letting him. But that's such a big one for me. What if no one's there? Mm. But that's why it's so important to do it anyway, because you're not doing it for the approval of others. You're doing it for God and you're doing it for yourself to grow closer to him. Mm. And I'm slowly learning that. And so that's why I'm so excited to be able to step out and step into a leadership role. I'm so excited for you. You know, the fear of numbers. I'm not sure where we get this friend. Like, I don't know why we're, I, but I specifically remember it was one of the very beginning of fearless uh, meetings. And we, we had a church in Chesterfield that was hosting us. And I remember, (laughs) this is like, I remember, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but it's true. I mean, it really happened. I looked out at the parking lot and no one was coming. No cars were there. No women were walking in and I knew that in the room there was probably like 11, 11 girls or something. And here we have this big event that we're supposed to be hosting. And, and I just remember being so discouraged, so discouraged. And I felt like the Holy Spirit just whispered to my heart. As long as you worry about who's in the room, Mm -hmm. this ministry is never going to flourish. It's never going to be blessed. And it was just like, Oh, and it was just like this nail in my heart. Like you go in and you love on those 11 women that are in that room and you give them your best, you give them your all and don't worry about anything else. Mm -hmm. And, but what's interesting is that is something that I've continued to struggle with. I've continued. And and I think it's because in our world, numbers equal success. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a dollar amount in your account. It's the, how many butts are in the seat? It's all that stuff. So what is something that you think that you've been working through yourself to go, you know what? I don't care if one person shows up, like, how does that resonate with you? And what, what are you doing to work through that? Well, it takes one person. It takes that one person to take one small comment, even away from those moments and turn and shine God's light. Mm. And that's all I keep focusing on. Um, Right, right now we're in a a Bible series um, at my church where we're talking about Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Okay. okay? Um, And one of the best parts about it is Paul is saying, hey, 
quit choosing your favorite preferences on those who speak to you. Don't choose this pastor because he's great. Don't choose this person, Bible study leader, because you think they sound the best. Mm -hmm. We are all united under God. And that is such a cool thing because even if no one sits in my Bible study, I'm sitting there to talk about God. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to show up can show up. That's great. But I'm just focused on the change and the light that he can shine through me. Mm. And that's how I'm working through that one. That's so good, Tara. That's so good. I think there's scripture that talks about how God leaves the 99 for the one. And I love that. I love that picture. I, I love that picture. I mean, we could all be doing our best, but there's this one lone ranger that's lost and, and needs their way found back to Jesus. And what if, what if Tara, you are set out for that one? Mm -hmm. And I think that's so beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm so grateful to hear that. Um, what, what qualities do you look for in a leader? I need someone that's relatable. I need someone that is understandable at my level. I don't need someone to read the King James style um, verses to me because I'm going to look at them like they have three heads. Um, like I've said before, and you know this, the Bible's a struggle for me. I'm trying really hard to learn how to interpret the word so I can understand it better so that then I can, you know, speak it out. But I need someone who can do that for me. Mm -hmm. I hate to word it this way, but someone that can dumb it down for me so I can understand it. Um, and so that's really what I'm looking for is somebody who's going to make it relatable because the word is alive and it's just as real today as it was then. Yeah. Um, but it needs to be in today's terms for me to get it. So when I have a Bible study leader who will take it and transform it for me and say, hey, this is really what he's saying here. It's a game changer for me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any particular resources that you're using to incorporate it in your life that are helping you, helping it become more relatable to you? I do. I have a study Bible, um, but honestly, this is going to sound silly. Um, my Bible study leader, Mary, who was amazing, taught me that the Bible app has the different translations yes. and there's an easy to read version. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest with you. Anytime I read the ESV or anything like that and transform it, I'll look and read it. And then if I don't understand it, I'll go straight to the easy read because I'm like, well, that makes more sense. Okay. That's a beautiful recommendation. It's great. It was very helpful for me. And now I can read ESV and be like, oh, I kind of know what they're saying here. Yeah. Plus our pastor this weekend made the comment of if there's something in a verse that you're looking at and you're like, that isn't very clear read around it. The, yes. There's clearer text around it. So don't just read one verse and just struggle on it. Read the whole chapter, see what's going on. And it might answer what it is that he means there. That's great advice. Very good advice. Okay. So qualities in a leader, your number one definitely is going to be, they're going to help you break down the Bible. You don't need a stuffy person that's got it all together that understands it. And you know, you feel judgment or, you know, you feel judged when you don't understand. So I love that. And I think that you are really good at that. I think that people are going to see that in you and they're going to want to sit under your, under your leadership because they are too going, I don't understand the Bible. I need somebody to help me. And you're going to have this deep compassion and empathy for them to help them walk alongside. I mean, if we think about this, our world is Bible illiterate. Mm -hmm. We are not spending there. There's a crazy Barna statistic out there about how many people are actually reading scripture. And I can't remember the percentage so either I'm, 14 or 16. Okay. Yeah. yeah the, it's a very, very, and, yes. and that is reading it on a regular basis. Right. So our world, I mean, we are, we are pushing away the one thing that can provide so much peace and comfort in our life. And it's God's word. Mm -hmm. So anybody that can come along like you and sit down and open Open God's word and, and make them feel like, hey, you belong here too. You can understand this. You can break this down with me. We need more people like that, Tara. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to step out and go, I'm going to do this. Thank you. All right. So you're going to step into leadership here. What do you think? Speak to somebody else that is in your shoes right now and is like, gosh, I'm really sensing like I should do something in my church. I'm really sensing that I should do something at my at my job right now. Reach out and, and maybe lead a Bible study at the cafeteria on my lunch hour or something. I'm really sensing that I'm supposed to do that. What would be the best leadership advice that you could give them? Do it anyway. When you are feeling that pull to do something, 
even though Satan is telling you you're not good enough, you don't know enough, do it anyway. God is asking you to reach out and do it. Um, First Corinthians 2, I'm just going to read it because it Please. is so incredibly amazing for me. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let God move you. Let him do it. Even if you can't form the words right, even if oftentimes your brain is going faster than your mouth, which happens to me all the time, just go and speak of God, speak of his word and let it change someone's life. So do it anyway. Even if you're doubting yourself, even if you think no one will show up, do it Mm. because God's calling you for a reason. And the beautiful part about that scripture that you just read is it's not about us. It's not about man. It's not about opinions. It's not about the way in which you do it or, you know, the, the fun TikTok or the trendy speeches or whatever. It, it's mm-hmm. about just being obedient, just yes. be obedient. Yes. So friends, I, I, I know there's going to be somebody listening to this that is in te- like, is just like in Tara's shoes. And they're thinking to themselves, there's no way I could do this and listen to our friend Tara here. Do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Do it anyway. Why do you think mentorship and somebody walking alongside you is so important? Maybe tell us a story of where someone has mentored you and it, it, it helped you. Why do you think that that's so important? Honestly, it really helps you to pinpoint and to turn to God's light. So for example, um, my sister who walked me into my Bible study, um, I have two sisters. One is an amazing involvement in her church. She's so strong in her faith and I love that. And she's still in the Catholic background, which is great. Her family is, it's beautiful. Um, And then my other sister is now more of a Christian side of things. Um, A lot of things have happened, you know, in both their lives, a lot of things that were, that really they just relied on prayer and seeing the change in them Mm. and seeing the change that God made in them motivated me to want to change too. Wow. Um, my Bible study leader, Mary, that I talked about before, um, she had such a similar background as mine. So finding someone who has something similar in the past and seeing how it changed them just really motivates someone to want to change. Um, and also, like you said, some people know more, some people know less. So when I can find someone else who knows a little bit more than me or a lot more than me, gives a little bit of insight and Hey, maybe you should look down this pathway and guide me this way. And that's just so huge to have guidance. I think something that really hurts our walk is loneliness. Mm -hmm. And what I heard you say, well, first of all, your sister is a beautiful example of I'm walking your butt into this Bible study. No, you need a butt kicker friend. (laughs) You need a friend. So, you know, to all my butt kicker friends out there listening, please remember that you're important. Please remember Mm -hmm. that when you walk alongside somebody and kind of drag them into something, even though, you know, like that is helpful. And I hear that in your story, which I think is so great. You wouldn't have gone to the Bible study without your sister kind of dragging you in there, which I think is so cool. So way to go, sis. And I also want want to just call out Mary, your Bible leader. Thank you, Mary, for saying yes, because, oh, it's going to give me tears, but like your ripple effect, Mary, of pouring into Tara, look where it's gotten and look now what she's about ready to be unleashed and do. So leaders, we need you. We need you to step up. We need you to say yes. We need you to not be afraid. We need you to fearlessly walk in obedience. And I know it's hard. And, and honestly, I always say that faith um, doesn't exempt you from trial trials. It equips you for them. Mm -hmm. So when you say yes, it's not going to be easy. And I think that that's another thing we just need to touch on. And maybe we'll go into a little bit more of that in our bonus content. Tara, would you stay around and let us talk to you a little bit more about uh, leadership and some fears that we have with that? Absolutely. I would love it. Okay. Well, I'm going to end right now. And I just want you, if you're willing to pray for the person that's afraid to lead. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Tara. All right. 
Lord God, thank you. Thank you that we have the ability to send out your word and to translate it and make it more understandable for people. Lord God, thank you that we are able to have technology to just reach more people, reach more hearts. And Lord God, I just ask that you could reach out to that person, that person that knows that you're calling them to do something, Lord, that that you're calling them out to help others, to shine your light. And Lord God, just let them hear this. Let them know that you're calling them and that they can do this, Lord, that they should just do it anyway. So please continue to reach out to those that need you most. Thank you for your patience and those that constantly turn your back just like I did, but then allow them to turn back around and you're right there waiting, Lord. So just be with those people that need you most, but also be with those people and strengthen them so that they can reach out to others and shine that light that you shine so brightly. Lord God, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tara, thank you for your boldness. Thank you for being courageous. And even as I see tears kind of whelping up in your eyes, I know that God is moving and working in you. And I'm so proud of you. Thank Thank you you for being on the interview today. Thank you. Hey, friends. We have something very exciting to share with you. It's called Podcast Plus. And what it is, is bonus content that I'm going to release every single month with bonus content from interviews. And right now I feel really called and led to just ask Tara a little bit more about struggles in ministry. And I think I'm going to open up a little bit about my struggles in ministry and what that looks like. And we're going to record that on our bonus content right now. So for $5 a month, you can literally subscribe to this exclusive content Content, and it's just for you. So I hope that you'll sign up for Podcast Plus today. If you found this to be helpful, you can find out so much more in my book, Nervous Breakthrough. And guess what? Right now you can order it on Amazon. Also, can you do something for me? Will you help us get the word out about this podcast? I would be so honored if you would share it with your loved ones, rate it, review it, and also be sure to subscribe. And lastly, And I really mean this. We want to hear from you. If you have suggestions or ideas on something that I should cover or a tip that you'd really like help on, please send us an email, podcast at fearlessunite.com. Again, that's podcast at fearlessunite.com. Thank you so much for listening.